the topic is um, Thomas Piketty. I don't know if you've read something about Thomas yeah. Piketty in his book, uh, Capital in the 21st Century. It's just been published, so I'm going to talk about economics. So there's ups and downs a little bit. <laughs> um, um, yes, I'm going to talk about ideas like social mobility, meritocracy, wealth, income. What if you know what Piketty is about? No. <laughs> right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, a new book by Thomas Piketty. You may recognize the name um, because this book, which has just been published, Capital, in the 21st century, is already a bestseller. Um, it has become something of a conversation topic, especially in the U.S., some call Piketty a rock star economist, or even a new Karl Marx. And so I wanted to know a little bit more about what he had to say. Now, don't worry, I'm not an economist, and um, a lot of the nuances in the book are above my head. But I thought perhaps we could review his arguments, and perhaps we could join the debate. His book, Capital in the 21st Century, demonstrates that Capitalism, as, as an economic structure, as an economic model, creates inequalities to a degree that is unsustainable. All right, you may think that this is hardly groundbreaking. We all know that um, there is an unequal distribution of wealth in society and that the increasing concentration of wealth in the hands of a few people may be a concern. We are all familiar with the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement, which famously protests against the richest 1% of the population that is causing all the trouble, as opposed to the 99% of people um, who had to bear the brunt of the crisis. Moreover, today we have economic data showing that the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few is not a myth. Uh, for instance, in the UK, Levels of economic inequality uh, are now comparable to those reached in Victorian times. And in the US, for instance, the top 1% owns 37% of the total national wealth. Now, what is new about uh, Piketty and what sparks the debate is that he completely demolishes the myths what he, called, what he calls myths of meritocracy and social mobility. And second thing, I think it's important to emphasize that all his work um, is based on objective, unbiased research. So it's, he's a scientific, he is just doing his research, and the book is the result of a 15-year-long project um, organized with other scholars. So again, I think it's important to emphasize that the book is not meant to be ideological, but scientific. So I said he demolishes the myth of meritocracy. What's meritocracy was the idea that uh, wealth, um, th we believe that wealth can be earned and deserved in a way you get what you deserve. But uh, to Piketty that is a lie. Wealth is only inherited. Um, just like social mobility, meritocracy is a lie and in capitalism, there's no tendency towards equality. However hard you work, if you're not born rich, it's not going to work out. Now, his argument rests on two categories. One is wealth and one is income. By wealth, he means inherited wealth, inheritance, and income is earnings linked to work. So the trend that he explains that we see is that wealth always goes up because it accumulates. It's passed on from generation to generation. While incomes, even if they can go up, so they also go up when there is economic growth, but they never catch up. And why is that? Why do we have wealth exponentially going up and incomes going up but more slowly because when you have capital you invest it so these who have an inheritance invest on in capital and the return on that capital 
will always be higher than incomes. And that's his main finding in the book. Meaning that the rich always get richer, uh, to put a long story short. And that incomes can grow, but they usually grow slowly or they stagnate at times of low growth, where they sink. So he has a diagnosis, which is fairly logical. We need to redist redistribute wealth, since there is such an equality. And how, how do we do it? What is his prescription is by implementing a global tax on wealth. His advice is to implement an 80% tax on incomes above $500,000 a year in the US. And of course, it will be no surprise to you that this does not go down well with his, his detract the detractors, the conservatives. Um, they usually tend to reject that kind of taxation. And what do they say? What do they argue? Well, they argue that um, the general standards of living um, overall have improved uh, over the last couple of decades. Um, so there's no need to start some sort of class warfare. Um, in short, capitalism is not so bad. My conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, is that, well, first, I hope that this debate um, will be fruitful. Um, I tend to agree with, uh, Pickett, with what Piketty says, both with his diagnosis and his, and his prescription. I think that in general we have to do what we can to, to protect social justice. Um, however, his, his book seems to me um, to be like another IPCC report on climate change, because here again uh, we know what we are doing wrong, we know how damaging it can be, uh, we know that we have solutions at hand, yet the question remains, um, will we act on a political level before it is too late? Thank you.